Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Another Dime in the Jukebox, and today my guest is the lead guitarist for the LA-based heavy metal band Sabre, um, Joel Dom uh, Jim Dominguez. Dominguez. Dominguez? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi Joel, thanks for being on my show. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me. No problem. So... Uh, first question, what first got you into rock and roll? Um, I think it was a more like a series of events that got me into rock music. Um, so when I was a kid, my older brother was the one that kind of played music all the time. Mm -hmm. And he used to listen to um, like late 90s, early 2000s rock bands like um, Trapped and Seether, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. uh, what else was around at the time? sick puppies like all that stuff I see. and i i always liked that stuff it had like a you know like a hard rock edge to it but it didn't really resonate with me as much mm -hmm. and one day i just took his his ipod i think it was an ipod nano back in the you remember those back in like the 2000s yeah yeah i had one like in 2008 yeah it was like these little square ones and um I, I just took it to middle school with me and I was listening to it and I came along a song that um it was Rock of Ages by Def Leppard mm -hmm. and that like changed my world upside down I was like oh my god like this sounds cool and I'm from go ahead yeah I'm a huge Def Leppard fan oh, oh yeah um, I... the song that first got me into them is Pour Some Sugar on Me that's I a great song. Like, yeah, yeah, it's definitely an awesome song. I think that the first time I ever heard it, I was actually like 22 or 21 or something. And I've definitely heard it before in like a TV show or something like that. And I mean, like I knew it was Def Leppard. And then I downloaded a couple of Def Leppard compositions online and Pour Some Sugar on Me was one of them. So yeah, it's, it's an awesome yeah. song. One of the first ones that got me into rock and roll as well. Oh yeah, de definitely Death Leopard. They're such a great band. Mm -hmm. But getting more into like like heavy metal music at that same time when I was in uh, middle school, I met a guy named Michael Sanchez, and he's actually in a local band um, called Lords of Sin. Oh, really? And he showed he showed me Iron Maiden and Metallica, and I never looked back after that. That literally changed my world. Nice. Yeah, fantastic. Oh yeah, Metallica. I was a little bit into them when I was in college, but that never really caught on. I think they're like a little bit too dramatic for me, although <laughs> I, mean, I should give them another listen and see what I'll think. I used to think the same thing about um, Queen. I was never really that big of a fan of them, like ever since I got into rock and roll, I would listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers, Joan Jett, I would listen to Green Bay. Um, warrant well some warrant but i was never really all that into queen and but i just recently saw bohemian rhapsody a couple of days ago and i actually um i think that that was like the moment when i got into their music so i should definitely check out the talent. oh no yeah queen they're a fantastic band i i listened to them very early on as well and i was a huge fan my favorite song from them is um don't Stop Me Now. It has such an upbeat vibe, and I love it. But the funny thing about that song is um, I think Brian May absolutely does not like the lyrical theme of that song because that's how... Um, uh, oh, my God. That, I forget I'm forgetting their singer's name for some odd reason. <laughs> but um, that's how he lived his life, and, you know, partying and excess, and most people they don't really see that as like a lifestyle to live by because you burn out really, really fast and well, potentially you can die. <laughs> a lot of rock stars actually have had that lifestyle, pretty much every single one of them. And aside from, you know, you do have your cases like Jimi Hendrix, um, oh, yeah. Miss Joplin, well, Kurt Cobain killed himself, so that doesn't really count. It's not because of the drugs. Sid Vicious, that's definitely another case where um, yeah the excessive partying and drug use like it that's what happens to you but you know motley crew partied a lot oh yeah Queen totally off and they're still alive i mean red hot chili peppers anthony kiedis 
used a lot of drugs from like an early age, but he also got like clean on and off. And I actually recently read like a couple of years ago that he totally and completely stopped like doing drugs, maybe even drinking when he was from like little teen. So well it's good for them that, you know, they got their health back in track. Yeah, I think that stuff just kind of goes hand in hand with rock and roll music. You know, it's kind of like going against a man. It's like people tell you, don't do drugs, don't do this, don't do that. And rock and roll, roll music is about going against a man, anarchism, you know, just fighting the man, basically. So if you tell us not to do something, we're going to end up doing it. It makes sense. Yeah, to some extent. But like, that's, I mean, I can definitely see how that can be true. Um but I also think it's like about indulgence, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like access is definitely indulgence because uh, I believe like every single rock and roll artist whose biography I ever read who was like heavily into drugs, which is pretty much all of them. Yeah. Uh, like the impression that I got is that they're doing it because it's just like, it feels good to them. I mean, it feels good while you're high and it is addictive. Yeah, the feeling after isn't so great, though. <laughs> so, oh, so, so you'd know. I'm sorry if I'm getting, like, too personal here. If you don't want to talk about that, that's totally fine. But... Oh, no, it's just some... Um, I used to, like, party a lot in my earlier 20s, and, you know, the day after, you just feel just terrible, and the only way to get over it is to just keep going. It's like, you can never be hung over if you're always drunk, is a saying that a lot here a lot. <laughs> so it's just like, ugh. Yeah. But um, after a while, you know, you, you start, your body starts wearing down and you just kind of look in the mirror and you're like, can I really keep doing this if I just continue to live my life like this? Like, that's why a lot of people end up dying young. And that's not something that, you know, I wanted to keep doing. So I ended up just kind of stopping. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's definitely a good way to go by because you should definitely preserve your health and, um, yeah, like, I, I do, I love to drink and I love to smoke cigarettes, but I always also try to, like, work out and eat as healthy as I can and just basically, like, take good care of myself because um, you definitely want to feel like crap the next day, you know? I mean, honestly, to this day, I think that I have developed a certain tolerance to alcohol and also drinks in L.A. Whenever you go out, they're just, like, they are expensive. So it's Yeah, oh, yeah. To excess. And, like, I think it's, like, those two things put together that I'm rarely ever hanging over again. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next question. <laughs> How old were you when you started playing guitar? I was, I think I was 11 years old. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty early. Yeah, um, I had already, um, like, like I said, when I was listening to my older brother's music, like, I just knew it was very guitar-orientated. So I begged my mom to get me a guitar. Mm -hmm. And you no, know, gr growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, so she bought me this really cheap acoustic guitar. And you know, being eleven years old, I had no idea how to play. I didn't know how to tune it. Strings were terrible, and the action was so high you couldn't press down on anything. So I just cut my teeth playing on that guitar. And both my parents absolutely hated all the noise I was making because it really was just noise. Nothing was very musical about that. So, you know, it, it kind of diminished me from playing for a long time. But then I eventually just, you know, got the courage to pick it up again. I saw videos of like Jimmy Page and Angus Young. And I was like, if those guys can do that, I can do it. I definitely want to do what they're doing. They look so awesome playing. And I was just like, oh, I got to do that. I got to do it. So I ended up picking it up again. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's definitely good that you did that. I tried to learn how to play guitar when I was about 16, but I don't think that I was ever really enough into it because I remember like sitting down and trying to like learn your basic chords and I remember like strumming, but I was never really like the type of person who would like sit and strum for like hours because I've heard like that's how you, that's how you actually learn how to play the guitar. You have to like practice constantly. It, it's a, it's, yeah, that's part of it. I feel there there has to be some kind of like obsessiveness to like reach a certain level because I used to play for eight, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I, I would come home from school and I wouldn't even do homework. I just pick up the guitar and play like to the point where my fingers were bleeding. I had to super glue them to keep playing mm -hmm. and it was very excruciating, but 
I never really took classes um, early on. I just kind of listened to music and tried to play the songs. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of is the same way as strumming. But honestly, it's like taking some classes, learning chords and, you know, some scales and stuff. It really does help. And ear training, like all that stuff is will make you just leap forward in any like musical endeavor you have when it comes to playing guitar. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I've seen people that just kind of are just naturally good at the instrument. As soon as they pick it up, they're amazing. It's, wow. I wish I was like that. <laughs> well, the hard work pays off. I mean, oh, yeah. It's been, it's been a while since I've seen you guys live. It's been almost like a year, I think. So, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to um, the next show you have. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Actually, we're playing this Saturday on the 26th over at Knucklehead. Yeah. And I was just about to um, say that I actually was talking to uh, Steve just a week ago. And um, I was like, him and I were talking about pretty much the same thing. Like, when's the next time that Saber will be performing? And he said that you guys are going to be playing Saturday. But weird coincidence, this Saturday, Void Vader, I'm pretty sure that you've heard of those guys. You've built, you've oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, like multiple times probably. Um, so they are going to be playing at the Viper Room this Saturday. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> sorry, uh, guys. I do like uh, Sabres music, but whenever there is a Void Beta show in LA, I have to go. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, those guys are great. Um, we played with them. I think the first time we played with them was in Oakland last yeah. year. Uh -huh. Yeah, with Haunt, and I was blown away by those guys. Those guys are amazing. Their yeah. music is fantastic. It's so upbeat and so energetic. It's great. It's fun. It's just great. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look at his vocals and his guitar playing is like off the charts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and basically, like every single performance that they have is just it's so energetic. Yep. Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna have a good time with their show this Saturday. And I oh yeah, it's at that Viper Room, right? Yeah, it's going to be at the Viper. Yeah, awesome. So I do hope to, that Sabre will have another show coming up in L.A. soon that will not overlap with another show that I will go <laughs> <I will> to. <laughs> um, so, like, besides guitar, do you play any other instruments for sing? Um, I do backup vocals. I, I can't sing to save my life. My voice is not, well, I mean, it's, it's a little too deep for, like, the style of music we're playing. Mm -hmm. But then again, there's other musicians that can pull it off. But I guess, I don't know. I just, I just can't sing. When I was in middle school, I used to play saxophone. And that's where I um, started, like, with my love of music. Like, mm -hmm. reading sheet music and, like, different styles of music really kind of open up your your mind to, like, melodies and different chords and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it was great playing that instrument. I learned a lot. And more recently, um, I'll fiddle with the drums every now and then but not really that great i think my guitar is really just like my main instrument i see well vocals is my main instrument so yeah i, I definitely know what you mean uh how old were you when you first played in your uh very first band Ooh. um i think i must have been 15 it was just a group of guys that um that I met in my neighborhood. Um, one of them played guitar and he knew like a drummer and he got one of his other friends just to pick up the bass. And we all just kind of got together, started playing and we were all huge fans of Megadeth by that time. So uh, we named the band Panic mm -hmm. as an homage to Dave's first band. Mm -hmm. So, and we used to play, it was like thrash metal since we're all like super into thrash back then. But it was just kind of like, you know, still learning how to play our instruments. So it was just kind of a bunch of noise at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really go anywhere. So it just kind of fizzled out. I see. Yeah. Well, definitely got you to where you are today. Definitely. Like, yeah, led me down that road where it's like, I want to keep doing this. Like playing in a band and playing in front of people. It was, it's very exhilarating. It's like no other feeling that you get it's when there's like dozens of people just kind of screaming at you. I think it's fun. I used to definitely be, I had so much stage fright when I first started playing. My very first show was at the Key Club. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's there anymore, but it was in the downstairs um, stage and I could not look up to save my life. I was just staring down, having my hair cover my face. I was, it was so awkward, but it was like 
oh man, I'm so excited to be here, but at the same time, I was so terrified. <laughs> <laughs> was it like a big venue? Or no, I mean the ups the upstairs venue. It was pretty big. I almost kind of think it's like the size of the whiskey. Uh huh. But the downstairs stage is it's pretty. It was pretty small. It wasn't really like maybe like 40, 50 people. I see. That fit there, but you know, it's like a as a small local band when you're fifteen, sixteen years old. There's not even gonna be that many people watching you anyway. So it's it was all right. Yeah, well, I think that when you're first starting out, like basically any club is a good club to play at. I mean, I have only done like a few open mic nights so far, and yeah. I would always I go to this place, Maui Sugar Mill Saloon in Rosanna, and um, it's a pretty, let's say, like moderately sized bar. Like it's not too large, but it's not too small either. But on the open mic nights and Tuesday nights, the crowd, like it's still it's pretty modest. Yeah, but like I remember the first time that I ever did like my first, um, the first time I sang on stage since I was sixteen was um, three years ago, and I still remember that the first when I got off the stage when I finished my two songs, it was like I just felt so happy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like I wish that I could do open big nights more, and I'm definitely like planning my schedule around it now, but. I have to, um, like, I have to take care of my finances first before um, I can afford to go out because I do want to like go out on weekends and have fun every once in a while. And so, and when you do that, even if it's for just like one extra night a week, it still costs money to like. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And stuff. So you definitely have to be like financially conscious. About yeah. The whole thing, um, and. Um, having a day job is like definitely like my number one priority right now before yeah. I do it, but I'm definitely, I definitely want to do, I want to sing on stage more. So. No, yeah, like being a performer, it's like some people just kind of like, you know, look at musicians and they wish they could do that. But there's a lot of factors that go into being a musician. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't really know what it takes to be a musician until they're actually doing it. Yeah, well, you and And most, a lot, I've seen a lot of people that just kind of give up. You know, it's like, it's too hard or like they're they're not getting the results that they think they're going to get because you're not going to get it overnight. Like I've been playing music for 10, 15 years now and it's barely getting somewhere now. How old are you now? I'm about to turn 26. Oh, let's see. Yeah. I'm, I just turned 30 well, back in June. And wow. um, I started singing when I was 25. Well, I did take some voice lessons when I was in high school, but I went to art school for college and that kind of uh, put the whole singing thing on the back burner. Right. So college gets so busy. And after graduation, I started going out a lot. And when I was, um, I was going out to see live music. And doing that, I guess kind of just like really rekindled my love for music. And um, it becomes it so much that I decided that I want to start singing again. So I started taking lessons. Yeah, that age never goes away. Yeah. To be a musician. Yeah. No, it's always there. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, were you involved with any other LA bands before Sabre? Yeah, before starting Sabre, I was in a band called Ramit mm -hmm. um, for about two years back in i think it was back in 2018 i remember clearly I see. yeah and that's joining that band was it was it was definitely very fun i i was a huge fan of those guys when they first came out i saw them at their first show at the riff house mm -hmm. in uh in fullerton mm -hmm. and they to me they just had it all they had the look they had the songs and i was like they the veto their singer was just amazing i loved his voice i was like oh my god these guys are gonna they're gonna go somewhere and i heard that their guitar player had quit or left i'm not entirely sure and i messaged the veto just asking him like oh are you guys still gonna record or anything and he had told me it's like oh we're actually looking for a guitar player and he knew i played guitar so he asked me like if i wanted to you know try out and give it a shot and i was like oh hell yeah you know i'm not gonna fucking like miss this opportunity so he sent me I think it was about three or four songs and he asked me how quick I can learn them I learned them like 
maybe in two days. Like oh. I just, I, yeah, like learning songs for me, it's not really that hard. Mm -hmm. Like I just kind of developed an ear. It, it, and it, it's really it's really helpful when you're wanting to learn songs like when you can hear something and just pick it up real quick it it's definitely a uh, beneficial as a musician so I went down to rehearsal you know played the songs and he he was really surprised that I mean I wasn't playing them perfectly but I I could get through the song pretty well and yeah like right then and there after that he's just like well you got the gig if you want it and I was like fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah, being in that band definitely did teach me a lot about being a guitar player. Mike, their lead guitar player, he's amazing. He can play circles around me. That guy, he's so good. It's almost scary how good he is. I would just watch him at every rehearsal, rehearsal just warming up, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I wish I could play like that. That's He's so good. And DeVito, he's, he's a great singer. He's a great songwriter mm -hmm. and a great lyricist. Like I learned a lot of writing songs from him specifically more like he would always tell me if you're going to write something it has to be catchy like it has to get it's stuck in people's heads because uh -huh. that's one of the only ways that you can write good music uh -huh. one of the only ways you know mm -hmm. people write music however they want but the way he was showing me was just like this works like this is good i loved all their songs and just, you know playing shows and shows with those guys it was so much fun i have very fond memories of being in that band well it definitely sounds like a great experience and you said that the band's name is Gramit. Yeah. Okay, I'm definitely gonna check them out. I mean, do you know if they're still together or? No, that band dissolved. Oh. Um, I think back in late 2019, early 2020. Yeah, we had like one rehearsal, and then you know some stuff happened, and it just kind of never got back together after that. I see. Well, it definitely sounds like it had some pretty great musicians, and hopefully. Oh yeah guys have moved on to other musical projects yeah hopefully those guys you know that as far as i know i don't think they're doing anything anymore but they're they definitely have the the potential to do something if they wanted to I see. well hopefully they will yeah and um so how long have you been playing with saber i'm guessing it was like 2019 you said like 2018 maybe yeah i think it was late 2018 2019 it's, it's kind of hard to remember now I'm messing up a bunch of my dates but um that it actually started um i remember while i was in ramit we, we had a gig with steven's old band which was lethal night mm -hmm. and we were opening up for silver talon at the five star bar mm -hmm. and that night coincidentally i think lethal night broke up after that gig yeah um there was like just a bunch of stuff happening and a couple of days after that steven called me and he had a, uh, just out of the blue and i was like yeah how dude what's going on and he asked me if i wanted to you know start a side project with him like i don't know if he was too serious about it at the time but he just wanted to see what we could do and i told him like yeah i'm dude i'm i'm open to doing i just love playing music so i was like anything like that just gets me playing guitar like i'll do it so we met up it was me him and, and a drummer can't remember the drummer's name but um we were just doing covers and Stephen wanted to do like mostly covers at that time but um after i showed him some like guitar riffs and ideas that i had mm -hmm. he's like hey what about your other guitar player because i i was also in a band called stormblade uh -huh. and with those guys are the guys that are in saber now which is hat our drummer, he was our guitar player, and David, our bass player, he was also our bass player there. Mm -hmm. Um, he asked if um if me and Hat wanted to actually get serious and write more stuff. And so I talked to Hat and he was like, Yeah, yeah, he's like, I'm I'm down to do it, like let's do it. So we got together and just started writing riffs out. And Steven really liked where it was going. And I was like, Yeah, you know what, these songs are pretty good. And we just kind of like buckled down for a couple months and really hashed them out. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was just like, we got something good here. Why, like, what are we going to do from here? So it in hindsight, it was kind of cool that the uh, Ramit didn't work out because it, it kind of gave me 100% effort into going into Sabre because all my time and like musical ideas could be used for this. Mm -hmm. And it ended up working out so far. 
Well, yeah, clearly. And it was around this, uh, so basically, um, Ramit and um, Steve's old man, it sounds like they broke up at pretty much this, around the same time. Right? Almost around the same time, yeah. Yeah, so it's <laughs> it's really like super cool how it worked out that way for you guys. Yeah, you know, it's, like, it, it, it's, it's a weird coincidence, but <laughs> hey, it worked out. Yeah, sure did. Um, so have you lived in California your whole life? Yeah, uh, okay. Southern California, born and raised. Nice. Yeah, so were you born in Los Angeles or? No, I was born in Santa Ana, California. I so I, I'm more south of Los Angeles. I, I, currently, I live in Anaheim, mm -hmm. super close to Disneyland, but I was born and raised in Santa Ana. Just lived out of your mind entire life. I see. I see. Yeah. It's a it's 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 nice, you know. People don't really they they think of Santa Ana as like being a really bad place, I and mean, it was when especially when I was growing up as a kid. But it, it's calmed down. It's a lot nicer now. I see. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, when you say that that it's like it calmed down, you mean it used to be like kind of like dangerous, or yeah, there used to be a lot of gang activity, a lot of a lot of crazy stuff going on. <laughs> when I was a kid, I saw um. About, I think it was three or four guys just stab another guy, like literally 10 feet away from me. Oh my and I, I had no idea what was going on. I just heard a bunch of screaming and I just Holy ran shit. back to my to my house and I was like, hey, mom, something's going out outside, you know, like. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, uh, it, it was crazy. But, you know, it, it's a lot better now than what it was. From when I was a kid, I remember back in like late nineties, early two thousands, it was already towards the end, but I from the stories that I've heard in the early to mid nineties, it was really bad out there where you even step in the wrong neighborhood and you're gonna regret it. Oh my goodness. Well yeah, it was bad. It got better. Yeah. I was in Anaheim for a job interview like three years ago. Gosh, can't believe it's been that long. And I remember thinking that oh gosh, dude, no offense to Anaheim, but I just want to say that I'm kind of glad I live in LA. <laughs> it's just you know, once you, because um, the thing about Los Angeles is that uh, it's like there's so many uh, like cute stores and coffee shops, like pretty much like all packed together in like one yeah. place. And LA is like that pretty much all over the place. There's like tons of like, um, there's tons of places to shop for like food or for clothing. There's tons of great restaurants. There's tons of like great cafes. And uh, I mean, so far I've only hung out in Westchester, Santa Monica, um, West Hollywood, and now I live in Brentwood, obviously. So like when I went to Anaheim, at least the area that I was in for my job interview, like I don't know like how the rest of it is, but I thought it looked kind of like a little empty, but maybe <laughs> I should visit, visit Anaheim more often. Maybe go to Disneyland sometime. <laughs> I live really close to Disneyland, and this neighborhood is actually really quiet, really calm. It's really safe. I like it here. It's 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 very nice. Mm -hmm. Actually, I moved I moved out here with my with my girlfriend. We live together, and it's funny because when we first started dating, I would have her come over to where I was living with my mom in Santa Ana, mm -hmm. and she was terrified a lot because she would hear a bunch of police sirens and people screaming and like fighting. Well, and to me, it was just like, it's background noise. I hear this stuff all the, almost all the time. And she's like, how do you like just deal with it? And I was like, it happens every other day. It's 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 not a problem. <laughs> no offense or anything, but honestly, I can't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. I, I know it's not like everybody's like daily thing, but just growing up in that area was, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's better now. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay. Okay. So, um, next question. Um, who are your musical influences? Ooh, I have a ton. There's, I can go days about influences. Mainly, my biggest one is White Snake. I love. I'm just... a huge fan of White Snake. Oh my gosh, they're actually also one of the first bands that got me into rock and roll. I haven't listened to their like entire discography though, like only yeah. like, the songs, but. I mean, who doesn't like Here I Go Again? Oh, yeah, that's a classic song. It is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And it's funny that that's their biggest hit because it actually came out 
in an album before that super huge album in 87 that blew them up it came out in saints and sinners but it wasn't like a hit it was a single but it wasn't a hit mm -hmm. it wasn't until that album in 87 that came out that just like that song became number one mm -hmm. but that the original one has more of a blues uh, style to it which is I, I like it a lot mm -hmm. but I, i'm more of a heavy metal guy so that like that 87 album just is to me it's perfect it has 10 out of 10 every single song is amazing i see yeah, well, yeah but that's that that's one of my main influences and growing up my biggest influence is like megadeth mm -hmm. i love dave's playing it's just listening to it even now it just kind of like mind-boggling that's like how do you write riffs like that man it's just like holy crap it's crazy and then metallica for sure um iron maiden you know all those big bands growing up my teenage years that's all i would listen to it wasn't until like maybe i was like 20 years old where i started listening to more obscure underground heavy metal bands and i started like wow there's like so much more out there than just like the big like band names like i love bands like loudness there's a I'm wearing a shirt from a band called universe mm -hmm. those guys are they only released one album in the 80s and it was like amazing uh -huh. but yeah it's like i i think not just like in heavy metal and rock and roll music but like other styles of music definitely play a role in like influencing you as a musician like when I was a kid, um, we used to have um, one of my aunts and cousins living with us and they were heavily into rap music. And I started listening to like Tupac and Nas and Biggie, like all that stuff, like the the way they write lyrics and their flow. And it's just like, wow, the, there's so much more you can listen to that, like really play a role into how you write your music. Mm -hmm. So it's just it, it's, it's weird, like, but. That, that makes you unique as a musician because you're different influences rather than just one style of music. Well, uh, hmm, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, I mean, obviously, I love rock and roll, mainly like alternative rock. My favorite band is Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. I'm also, um, a huge fan of Green Bay, Joan Jett. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Warrant. Rod Stewart, Def Leppard, Motley Crue. Motley Crue is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Kiss. I have recently made it like <clears throat> a little homework assignment for myself to like listen to the entire Kiss discography. That's like, that's a feat. Down the middle, like it's definitely like a leap, but you know, um, I I mean, like I keep telling people that I listen to a lot of like rock music yeah but honestly like mostly um i'd say i listen to it about on and off because you can't exactly listen to the same thing like over and over and over again like you gotta mix it up a little yeah so i would listen to like red hot chili peppers or joan jett or motley crew and then the next day i would listen to like britney spears or 90s music or spin doctors or i don't know Katy perry or taylor taylor Swift. oh yeah no totally yeah, like I said, I love pop music. So yeah, you should definitely like always mix it up. But the reason why I like I made it, uh, the reason why I wanted to like listen to the entire Kiss discography is that I kind of want to familiarize myself with um, like rock music more in depth. And because the way that I listen to music, like pretty much ever since I was about like 18, or I've, I would listen to a lot, a lot of the same songs over and over and over again and so i just want to like branch out a little bit yeah except for the red hot chili peppers and like they're my favorite band for a lot of reasons and one of them is that they have like literally so many songs that i can easily say that's like one of my favorites right oh yeah no. it's really, really hard to pick a favorite red hot chili pepper song because they just have so many that are like so good they're just so, so good like, yeah that i can resonate that Californication album, like, as a kid, I, I listened to it on repeat for so long. I love that album to yeah. death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I just, like, when I was in college, I downloaded a whole bunch of um, their songs online. And I did, like, when you download songs online, first of all, I did it off of a Russian website because, like, I'm Russian. So I can speak Russian and write Russian. 
and okay. I got access to the website at the computer from my college's library. And when you download songs online, they're not like classified by an album. They're like all mixed together. And that's why like I can name the song, but I can never actually name what album it's from. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Well, as long as you know that you get to listen to your favorite artist with like the songs you like. Honestly, it's just like doesn't matter what album it's from. Absolutely. Like, yeah, they're all great. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Anyway, uh, next question. Um, do you have a favorite uh, local LA band? Yeah, actually, uh, Entranced. They're so good. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been a fan of Philly for a long time since I first saw him with his um, first band. I think they were called um, Auxiliary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just watching him play, I was like, this guy is on a whole other level than any other guitar player I've seen, especially in the local scene. The band before he started in Trance, um, Fortress, they're uh-huh. great as well. So good. Those guys just kill it. But yeah, so he, I think he put Fortress on on a hold to do in Trance with uh, James Paul Luna. Mm-hmm. And they just put out an EP not so long ago, and it's amazing. It's so good. So he, that that's... Currently, right now, that's like my favorite LA local band. Like, I definitely love watching them play. They're so good. Nice. It, it, it just, it's so infectious that they're, the title track on their EP, can't stop listening to it. So good. I'll definitely check them out. Yeah, you should. They're great. <laughs> Do you have a favorite LA club to play at? Um, I think it would be uh, Permanent Records. Mm. We we play that venue a lot. We actually played there with Void Vader. Oh yeah, I I remember that gig actually. It was a year ago, but yeah, it was a while ago. I think I still remember the date, uh, but it was definitely a great gig. It's oh yeah, Void House. It's um, uh, it's a pretty awesome venue. Yeah, and I love that this they have like records there for you to check out, uh-huh. like on downtime. It it's so good with, and then it has a bar too. So and with like little tables to hang out. It. it just the ambiance there is just, I love it. It's great. Yeah, I definitely, I love the atmosphere there, atmosphere there too, especially considering what it was before, because um, actually before Permanent Records Roadhouse became Permanent Records Roadhouse, it was a club called Cafe Nella. And I, was I did not know that. Like a really long time ago, like five years ago, I think. And it was, uh, from what I remember, it was a pretty shitty venue. It's like um, the bands that played there sounded like, I don't know, like teenage garage bands who really sucked. And they would only play <laughs> there. So, and the atmosphere definitely wasn't like as polished up as it is right now. And obviously there was no record store. Like I don't even listen to records. I have a lot of musician friends who keep telling me I should. In fact, the last interview, the interview I had last week um, it was with a friend of mine who has a band called The Falling Doves. And she yeah. came out, by the way, and he was like, well, you should really listen to music on records because it's just like a completely different quality. Uh, I don't know right now. Spotify sounds like a pretty good uh, music source to me because it's like <laughs> anything, anything you want to listen to, like literally anything you want to listen to in the world, like on the go. Yeah, it's in the palm of your hand. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I, I have a couple of records and I will play them every now and then. And honestly, I, I, I hear what people say when it just sounds better on a record. To me, it does. It, it just sounds better on a, on a vinyl spinning. Mm-hmm. But there's also the convenience of having a streaming service. And like when you're on the go, you can just pick up your phone and press play on literally almost anything you can listen to. Yeah, It's like a double-edged sword for a musician though, because as a musician, people you know, they make their revenue out of vinyl CDs and stuff like that. They make more money like that. But if you put up your music on Spotify and people were just like, oh, I don't have to buy your music. I can just listen to it on Spotify. You're supporting an artist, but you're not really supporting an artist because they need those funds to keep going on their endeavors to make more music. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I will buy records from bands that I really like. And I also listen to them on Spotify. Like I will buy shirts and stuff like that because I know what it's like to support a band. Mm-hmm. I'm in a band. Yeah. So 
I like my band, like band merch as well because, I mean, dude, it's merch. It's like, uh, why wouldn't I want to sleep in a t-shirt from one of my favorite bands? And honestly, I would buy records, but I would frame them and hang them up on the wall. I already did that with one of my friends' records, and I'm like, I'm so happy with the way it looks. Right. I think that I should probably like collect them and then invest in a record player and listen to them, but I just have this really, really big itch to like hang them up on the wall and like look at them. No, yeah, they look great up on the wall. I um when I got like Saber's album on vinyl, I put it up on my wall, but my cat is a very curious cat and he likes to go up there and like just swat at it so i just took it down i was like i'm not gonna put it up there anymore how high up did you hang it it's like how high does your cat have to jump or- um no well, it's not that he's jumping it's we have a like a little cat um oh yeah like- yeah so he when he goes up there he can jump towards where the vinyl is mm-hmm. and he just gets really curious and starts going at it so i'm like i'm just taking it down this i don't want you to ruin this like i worked hard on this yeah exactly well the, your cat clearly likes music Uh, do you have a um okay so how many tours did you go on with saber so far Uh, we've only done one and that was back in april Uh it was a great tour definitely first tour i've ever done and it was with really great bands we went with haunt we went with screamer and we went with traveler and all three are like some of my favorite bands Especially uh, Screamer, like I've been listening to them since I was a teenager. So going on tour with them, is, and we were riding in their bus. So it was like, wow, I can't believe like I'm in here with these guys. So it, it was really fun. It was really cool playing night after night with those guys. It was definitely a dream come true. Yeah, I bet. Oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, I think I may have seen Haunt Live because I remember that it came to a Void Vader show. I mean, Sorry, not Void Void Vader Saber. I came to a Saber show last spring in like April, I think, and it was at this place called Zebulon. And but I got yeah, there, yeah, I got there a little bit too late for your set because you guys went on at seven, and I and I don't think I got there until like nine, because I had no okay. idea that you were going on at seven, even though Stephen and I were like texting that the day before or something like that. And I think he told me, but it must have like slipped my mind. And I remember seeing one of the, the act who was performing when I got to the club. I think maybe that may have been hot, but I mean, that name definitely sounds familiar. So. Oh, they're great. They, Trevor is like the mastermind behind Han and he's a fantastic songwriter. He, he writes everything, he plays everything and he sings on it. So he's just, one of the greatest musicians out there right now. He's super hardworking. That guy is always working on music. I'll text. I I try not to text him so much. I'll but every now and then when I'm texting him, he's like, "I'm busy." Like, you know, like, what do you need? Just get straight to the point. <laughs> super busy guy. <laughs> well, you know, that's the only way to get successful. Oh yeah, hard work. That's true. Any crazy stories from that one tour? Ooh. Um one one that i will say was when we played in seattle um we were so we were the opening band the entire tour you know first band going up um i was expecting you know not that many people to see the opener because everybody wants to see the bigger bands which were screamer and haunt because everybody loves those bands but consecutively every night when we would go up there'd be like a handful of people there but I as I gradually looked up through the middle of the set, it the room would just l- l- get full and lit up. It was amazing, but specifically on at in Seattle, I think we played at a venue called El Corazon, and so we start playing. You know, first two songs and the, I think we started playing like at seven or eight o'clock, and wasn't that full. But towards the middle of the set, that place started getting really packed, and I was just like what's going on man and so we finish playing we go upstairs we change and like you know we got to get to our our merch table and there's a line of people that just kind of want to come up to us and just like you guys are great can we buy you drinks 
and this went on for the entire night i we didn't spend a single like dollar on drinks and we got so drunk it, it was hilarious and we, we put out a little tip jar and instead of writing tip we literally just put beer money and people kept <laughs> buying merch and throwing in beer money in there it's like you guys have fun just keep going and as they were putting in more money in there, they just kept bringing us more drinks so it's like this is like this is heaven <laughs> yeah yeah definitely one of the perks of being oh yeah yeah so fun yeah speaking of free drinks next time i do an open mic night i would have to ask them whether i have to pay for the drinks or get them for free because the um the only few times when i ever did, did an open mic night I like that concept just like completely slipped my mind because I'm like way too focused on other things. Like, did I get my back in tr uh, back of trucks tracks to um, you know the guy who's running the open mic night? Yeah. Why do I have my lyrics with me? And of course, I'm also focused on performing. And so, thanks for reminding me of that. Like I totally like completely forgot that if you're a performer, <laughs> you can technically get free drinks. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I still like I I know there's some people that out there that that won't drink before performing. Like I, I it's like a ritual or something. But I I still sometimes get like a little bit of nerves, not so much before. So I'll have like a drink or two, like mm -hmm. liquid courage, and it definitely helps me to go up there and just like perform. Cause I I used to have stage fright like crazy i wouldn't look at people but now it's just like to be a performer you know you have to interact with the crowd you have to make them feel like they're in, being engaged and they're part of the, the concert you know it, and definitely it's a lot more fun for me now than it was before i, I love doing it yeah well that's good it's definitely good that you got over your stage fright oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am definitely like one of those people who does i actually have a rule that i cannot have any alcohol until after I sing because um, it can. Um, I know that it will affect the performance. Oh Not yeah, it, it's different for singers. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I see Stevens like little rituals before any show, and like he will not have like any like almost any alcohol before performing. Mm -hmm. Always wait till after, especially singers. You know, the, um, their vocal cords are so. I don't. They're like fragile. I guess like any little thing can like just throw you off especially if you're singing night after night after night for an entire month you really have to take care of yourself but like us guitar players and drummers you know we can get away with it we can get drunk and I, as long as you're playing the song right and you know like we can do it but not singers <laughs> <laughs> like and it's not just your vocal cords like for me it's not necessarily your vocal cords but it's um it's your breathing and it's also like because alcohol does go to your brain and yeah it makes you relax in a way that like the thing about singing is that you have to like be completely in control of your body in order for you to sound good and um if you drink then alcohol will relax you and it will take away that ability for you to like make your voice sound good and like make your vocals sound good. It's like the main thing. It's like something that I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, next question. Um so hmm. do you have another favorite genre of music besides rock and roll to listen to? And like what Outside of like rock music, I'll listen to like pop, modern pop music. Like I love The Weeknd. Me and Steven geek out, geek out about him like crazy. We actually went to go see him live um, at the SoFi Stadium a couple months ago, and it was amazing. That's cool. It was so good. Yeah, yeah I was uh, at the SoFi Stadium uh, at the end of August to see Motley Crue and Poison. Oh, yeah. How was that? I, I actually it didn't was I didn't go. Awesome show. I mean honestly, every single act was amazing. I did not get there in time to see Joan Jack because she always goes on first and right. it worked on Saturdays. And so I had to get to the concert right after work and like after five PM. Yeah. And so I did not get there in time to see her, but Poison, Def Leopard, like especially Motley Crue were amazing. 
<laughs> yeah. I bet. Yeah. There is a really crazy story about Tommy Lee pulling out his wiener in front of the <laughs> whole audience. His wiener being his wiener dog. Oh, <laughs> you probably saw that. Um, I mean, if you follow Motley Crue on social media, they posted. They did like a whole bunch of posts right after it happened. Yeah, yeah, it was really funny. I'm glad that I was there to see that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. hilarious. Um, and last question: Does Saber have any new albums coming out? Yeah, we're currently working on new material and it's more looking towards like we might go record early next year. Oh, nice. That's the plan. Yeah, we actually have a lot of ideas and we're trying to see like which ones, you know, stick the best or sound the best. And, you know, we're, we've are we been certainly um, delaying it for a while. I know I've had a bunch of people asking like, like it's been like um, I think it's gonna be almost two years now. Um, at the end of December, since Without Warning came out, so I have a a buddy of mine. His name's Mark from Brave Words Magazine. He'll email me every now and then. He's like, "Where's the new music, man? Like I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting." And it's like, it's like, come down, man. Like we're we're trying our best because we all have day jobs, you know. We all have other responsibilities, and it gets in the way. But ultimately, we really just want to make sure these new songs if they're just as good or even better than the first album. So it, we're really trying to pay attention as much as we can. And more recently, we we had a couple more delays because our drummer had his house burned down and that's where we would rehearse. Uh -huh. So that kind of set us back a while. And we just played at Brick by Brick in San Diego and our bass player got his bass rod. They, they s broke into his car and they stole it. Oh. Yeah, so it's just like, well, man, what's going on? Like, I don't want to jinx it, but like, what's next? Like, what's gonna like keep hindering us from working on this stuff? But well, we're we're just trying to get past that and like keep working. Okay. But we're we put we kind of set a deadline that we want to have it done by the end of the year and go record early next year. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we're trying to do. Well, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, and speaking of which, I have I I do have to check out Saber. It's like it's been a while since I've seen you guys live, and I do remember Steven's vocals. They're definitely very uh, powerful. Oh yeah, he he loves singing. Like <laughs> when we're rehearsing, he likes to be like the loudest, and like he just loves like that attention towards him. And yeah. as a, as in a band, like if when you have a singer, you need to have somebody that is like that. Mm -hmm. That that you need to have people gravitate towards like the perform the performance aspect of a band because you, you're up there performing and it's like very dull or people aren't like engaged in it. It's not as fun. It's not that memorable. But Steven has that aspect. He loves performing. He loves just going around and you know, being loud. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I definitely remember his stage presence. He's very, uh, he definitely has to perform and things down. I mean, the way that oh, he's yeah. he on stage and like his, especially his vocals, he's a small guy, but God, he has a huge voice. He has a voice. I, I heard, I remember when we were on our very early rehearsals, he held the scream, I think for it was like, I'm not kidding you, it was like almost 30 seconds. A man can, he has some lungs. He <laughs> can hold a note for so long, it's insane. I don't know if he can do it now. I'll probably bet him on it, but he 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 can. He definitely has some powerful vocals. He sure does. Well, I'll be sure to check out your new album. And yeah, like I said, I do have to check out your uh, uh, current music. Like the stuff that you have out now. And yeah, for sure. Thanks. I'll be on the lookout for shows and I'll definitely uh, try to make it uh, like, you know, as soon as I can. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. No problem. No problem. And those were all the questions that I had. So, well, Joel, thanks again for being on my show. It was so much fun to talk to you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. Well, have a good one. Bye. Thanks. You too. Bye.